Hi guys, this is teacher David. Today I'll be going through some um sec three final year exam papers with my student for um yeah for as a preparation for her in preparation in preparing for her final year exam. So without further ado, let me go straight to the question that I'll be going through. Okay, the first question that I'll be going through. Okay, probably not this question. This one we went through already. Okay, this question. Okay, this question. Okay. It says that the equation of circle is x squared plus 6x plus y squared, right? Minus 10y equal to 66. So for this kind of question, right, it's best to... Okay, this one you can actually complete the square to get your answer. Okay, I believe you already have completed your square, right? And already got your answer, right? And the radius is 10, center is minus 3, 5. Correct? Yeah. So this one you just complete the square. So if you complete the square, let me quickly just do the completing the square. So if you complete the square, you add three square. And you add five square. So if you add nine and add 25 on the left side, you should add 9 and 25 on the right side as well. So this one, you add up to be 100. 100 is 10 square. Okay, then this one, you will have x plus 3 square. And y minus 5 square. So the radius is 10 and the center, right? Coins of center is minus 3, 5. Okay, then PQ is the diameter of circle. P is 5, 11. Find coordinates of Q. Okay, this one, right? If you have to draw, sketch out this circle, right? Okay, the coordinates of center is minus 3, 5. This is the center. So let's say if I will draw a circle, radius of 10. So let's say I will draw a circle. Okay, let's say I have a circle here. And 5, 11, probably somewhere here. This is your P. And this minus 3, 5. So this is my diameter. Okay, I'll draw a vector circle. Okay, yeah, something like that. So I have a circle. Then the center is minus 3, 5. Okay, because I have the coordinates of my center C and the coordinates of P, right? I can find gradient of this diameter already, right? So gradient of this diameter is assumed knowledge. So I'm not going to show you how to do because it should be an assumed knowledge by now. So I'm just going to write out the gradient of PC. Gradient of PC is 3 quarter. Okay, difference in Y divided by difference in X, you get gradient. Gradient is 3 over 4. So you have the gradient, you have, I have the coordinates of P, right? So I can find equation of PQ, am I right? Mm. So equation of PQ, all these are assumed knowledge. So I'm not going to dwell on how to do them. I'm just going to write out the answer. Equation of PQ 
equation of PQ is y equal to three quarter x plus 29 over 4. Okay, that's the equation of PQ. So once I have equation of PQ, I have equation of the circle, right? I just do my simultaneous equation. I can solve and find my coordinates of Q. Okay? Mm. So coordinates of Q, eventually you have negative 11, negative 1. Okay, coordinates of Q, negative 11, negative 1. Okay, basically, you're just solving simultaneous equation of this equation one and this one equation two. Okay, simultaneous equation by now is an assumed knowledge, so I'm not going to show you the detail of how to get this. You just substitute y is this into here, solve it simultaneously, correct the equation. You have you have uh two answer, right? The other one is x equal to five. Obviously, x will be equal to five because that is for your point P. Mm. Okay, so you have two answers, uh, two sets of answers. The other one is negative 11, negative 1. So that's how you do them. Because simultaneous equation, by now, it should be assumed knowledge. So I will not be showing you how to do them. Okay, part 3 is the one that you inquire. So part 3 says that x in the line of x is minus 1, right? So x minus 1, let's say, this is minus 3, right? So mm -hmm. minus 1 probably is about here. Okay, since minus 3 is here, minus 1 is probably about here. Then you draw another circle that's a reflection, right? So think for a moment. Huh? You're not going to draw a full circle um, based on the reflection. <laughs> you're just going to reflect just one point. And the point you're going to reflect is the center point. The center is negative 3 and 5. So a reflection in on this along this line, x is minus 1, right? You will have... The center, the new center point is one. Uh, the new center point is one five. Does that make sense? Mm. You understand why one five? Huh? Because minus three, then it's minus one, right? Short of minus two, right? That means the the I just shift two units. Uh. These two units. So I shift another two units. Is my one. Because it's a reflection on the uh, on a vertical line, right? So my x, uh, y axis is the same. I mean, the y coordinate is the same. Make, make sense, huh? So now I have the center for the new circle, right? So the center, let's call it C1. C1 is 1 and 5. Okay, C1 is 1 and 5. Okay, if you reflect, right, do you think there'll be changes in the radius? Yeah. Would that be changes in the radius if you reflect? No, no right. <laughs> the, the, the size, because radius is actually the size of the circle, right? The size of the circle not going to change, right? If you go through a reflection. No, Wait, right. Why, why is it 1, not negative 1? Huh? Because I reflection, ma. But it is x equals to negative 1. Yeah, x is negative 1, huh? X is negative one is the line of reflection. Here is my negative three R. This is negative one R. X negative one R. So this X is one. Here to here, how many units? Two units, right? Hmm. So here to here will be two units also. Uh. Oh, Understand? Okay. Mirror la uh, mirror. Oh. The mirror is this line. This line is the mirror. Okay. Okay, so the radius will be the same, right? Mm. Correct not? So R is still 10, right? If I know my R is 10 and, and I know my, my center, right? I can have my equation ready, right? Mm. The question asks you to write down, uh, so no, no need to explain.
Okay, the question asks you to write down, so no need to explain. Or they ask you to find. Okay, then you find, oh, then you explain a bit. Oh. You can explain uh, two marks to explain a bit. Oh. You explain how you get this. Uh. Mm. <laughs> and you explain how come the radius is 10. Uh. Then you can say since the center is this point and radius is 10, right? Therefore, the equation will be this. They ask for equation. They didn't ask for general or standard, right? So you can leave it in in standard form. Mm. Okay. Okay. It's okay, idea. Mm. Okay. If the question said write down. You just write down. No need to explain anything. But they ask you to find. You explain a bit. Okay. Mm. Two marks are. So one mark for correct answer, one mark for how you get the answer. Okay, the next one is to write down and simplify binomial theorem. This one, the n is not defined for you. The n you have to find. So let's say the n is not defined for you, right? You got to go back to your basic uh, of binomial theorem. A plus B power n. Uh. You still remember your a plus b power n? How, how to expand? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to write out the, the formula here. Actually, formula is to quite memorize. It's given. But this formula is quite easy to remember. n0. a power n. Then b power n minus 0. A power n minus zero, sorry, then b power n. Then after that, n one, a power n minus one, b power one, and two. A power n minus 2 b squared. They just want first three term, right? I got my first three term already, right? Mm. Okay, now you examine uh, your a is 1, right? Your a are all 1, right? <laughs> yeah. So change all your a to 1. b is what? b is negative 3x. So change all my b to negative 3x. Okay, uh? mm. okay, now you continue. N0 is 1. 1 power anything is still 1. Correct? Mm. Okay, anything power 0 is still 1, right? So this is 1. Make sense? Mm. Okay, so this one is 1. Uh. N1 is N. 1 power anything is 1. Negative 3x power 1 is negative 3x. Okay, it's not okay, right? Mm. The tricky part is here. N2, uh. N2 you need to remember, right? It's like that. Okay, this is N, N2. Can I remember? Yeah. You don't can I remember, right? One power anything is one. Uh. So mm. negative 3x squared would be 9x squared. Well, negative, I square is positive. Remember to put the dot, dot, dot. Then after that, we continue to simplify 1 minus 3nx plus n square minus n over 2, then 9x square. 
you can write this as 4.5 x squared also can, but I will not do that lah, because it's better to live in fraction or 9 over 2. Lah. Okay, I simplify it here. Expand, simplify. So case closed already, lah, A part 1. Mm. Okay. Then part 2, right? Because it's all linked. Lah. <laughs> part 2, given that third term in the expansion is in ascending is this right okay the third term is this fellow here right the third term is this guy here mm. so you equate equal to 189 x square Okay, since the third term is this fellow, you equate, oh? then x square can remove, right? So n square minus n is will then be equal to 189 times 2 over 9. Okay? Mm. Times 2 over 9. Uh. Then you simplify, you would have n square minus n minus 42 equal 0. This should be 42, if I'm not wrong. Okay, let, let's verify the calculator. Uh. 189 times 2 over 9. 189 okay, times 2 over 9 is 42. So 42 bring over is negative 42. n square minus n minus 42 is 0. Right? So n plus 6 n minus 7 equal 0. 6 times 7 is 42. La. So the difference is n, right? So it must be 7 and 6. Then negative n, right? <laughs> so it must be negative 7. Okay? Mm. So n is negative 6 or n is 7. n is negative 6 is not applicable. Because n cannot be, be negative. Because binomial expansion, n is positive. So n is 7. Find the value of n r. n is 7. Okay? Okay. Okay, next one. By considering the general term. Okay, these are all link one. Uh. Correct? Yeah. I guess it's all link one. Uh. Okay, they, are, they say general term, right? So you have to craft out the general term formula. I'm going to leave my answer for part A here first, uh, in case I need them. So you're going to create or tailor made a formula for the general term. Okay, general term, right? 20R. Okay, because okay, because if it's general term of A plus B N, right? Mm. Okay, general term. Uh, okay, this will be N R A power N minus R B power R. A B power N. And B power R, sorry. Yeah, because the, the, the indices add together must be N. So N minus R, then B power R. So this is the general term. So this one will be 20 R, because my N is 20. A is 1 over 3X squared. power of n minus r, 20 minus r in this case. Then x power r. Then you continue to simplify. Okay, 20r you can't simplify because you don't know what is your r. Okay, here, here right, is 1 power 
20 minus r. 3x square r minus 20. Understand why all? Mm. You don't go and write <laughs> 3 negative 1 x negative 2 then 20 minus r. La. You deal with all the negative indices. Ah. Hey Dave, I tell you. Okay. So you can revert this thing as r minus 20. Then keep, keep this as 3x square is okay. Then x power r. And after that will be 20r again. 1 power anything is 1, right? So I no need to write this again. Huh? Okay, I just write 3 power r minus 20. x power 2r minus 40. Plus r. Okay, plus r. Understand, huh? mm. Okay, this one will become 3r, 3r minus 40, right? Yeah. 3r minus 40. Okay. Mm. Okay, now right, I have the, I have tailor-made a formula, right, for my general term. That means this formula, right, can only work for this expansion. Uh. No other question, uh. only for this question. Okay, you tailor made this formula just for this question for all the terms uh, in the expansion here. Mm. Okay, then the question is asking you to explain how come there's no constant term, right? Okay, think for one moment, right? Since this formula, right, the general term formula, right? This one we just tailor made out on, right? Okay, it's the formula for this expansion, right? For all the terms are uh, in there. Mm. Then, under what circumstances you have a constant term? You think for one moment. Under what circumstances you have a constant term when your x is zero? No, x is not zero. X is zero, the whole thing disappears. X power zero. X power zero, the indices for x is zero. So you examine this formula carefully, right? The indices for x is your 3r minus 40, isn't it? Mm. So before you write 3r minus 40 is zero, uh, you need to explain how come you're equating 3r minus 40 equals zero. So you have to write out some explanation. Uh, anyway, the question asking you to explain. So you cannot run away from writing some theory. Uh. So you can write constant term, right? Since constant term, since constant term only occurs okay, it only occurs when what happened when your three r minus forty is zero. Okay, so your 3R, then you can equate 3R minus 40 is 0. You solve for your R. What happened to your R? Your R is actually a fraction, right? Okay, R is 40 over 3. 40 over 3 is 13 and 1 third. Then you think for a second, right? Can R be a fraction? Can R be a fraction? Can. Can you sure R cannot be a fraction? How come R cannot be a fraction? Because you cannot choose a fraction. Okay, because if R is a fraction, right? You guys, I mean, uh, if R is a fraction, uh, R is a fraction, uh, 20 choose, uh, as you say, look, cannot choose a fraction, no? 20 choose a fraction. Then R is a fraction, right? This in this also become fraction. This one also fraction. Then um, it doesn't make sense, lah. Uh, it doesn't hold water. They have to explain again, huh? They have to explain again. Since R can only be a whole number or be an integer. Okay. 
since R can only be a positive integer, or whole number, okay, R can only be a positive integer or whole number, right? Mm. Therefore, constant term does not occur in this expansion. Constant term does not occur. in this expansion. Well, mm. okay. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Okay, next question, right? Okay, this one. Use the substitution u equal to power x to solve, right? Okay, your here is correct, right? All the way until here. Lah. Yeah, I'm not sure what to do with the here, here, here got problem already, lah, okay? Here, here all correct. Okay, until here you 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 make yeah, you can't you you couldn't find the answer already. Okay. I'm gonna do from scratch again. Okay, u is 2 power x. Then it's 2 power 2x plus 1. Plus 6. 7 bracket 2 power x. So this one is become 2 power 2x times 2 plus 6 equal to 7 bracket 2 power x. Then this one will become 2 bracket 2 power x squared. Okay, minus 7 plus 6 equal 0. This will then become 2u squared minus 7u plus 6 equal 0. Mm. Then after that, you continue to, to solve this quantity equation first. You'll end up with 2u minus 3 and u minus 2. So u will then be 3 over 2 or u is equal to 2. Okay, when you solve this kind of question, you don't stop here. Uh. Students, sometimes they stop here, they move on already. <laughs> they thought they solved the question already. But they forget they need to sub it back. So 2 power x is 3 over 2. 2 power x is 2. Or 2 power 1. So x equal to 1. Here you have to employ logarithm. Huh? So I'm going to take log base 2 on both sides. Okay, if there's a power x here, right, I can bring down, right? Okay, imagine log 3 over 2 to base 2, right? Log a fraction, right? It's log minus log, right? Mm. Correct? Mm. Then log 2 base 2 is 1, no? This one I can take base 10, right? Change base to base 10, right? So that I can employ my calculator to, to get the answer for me. So this one, you employ your calculator. Your calculator will tell you 0 
four, nine, six. Okay, well, depends on the question. Three SF, four, four decimal place, three decimal place, two decimal place. You you flip to the front now, okay? The front will tell you. Okay, usually it's three SF, huh? Okay, three SF. Okay, zero point five eight five is the answer. Okay. For x and one, of course. So you have to write x equal to one, or x equal to zero point five five three SF. Mm. Okay, the question will say three SF or two decimal place. <laughs> Just follow the instruction. But you you show this answer first, uh, then you show the final answer in in what the the answer, the question paper require. Mm, okay. You have to flip to the front to double check uh, 3 SF, 2 decimal place, or 1 decimal place, or 3 decimal place. Mm. Okay, if I'm not wrong, it should be 3 SF. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, this one. Go. Okay, this guy here, right? This is correct. Uh. Okay, this guy is correct. And your A obviously lie in the first quadrant already. Uh. Okay, first quadrant. Uh. Mm. Okay, because your sign is positive, then they tell you A is between negative 90 to positive 90 la. so it's here la. okay it's here so it's either here or here so since sign is positive right obviously it's first quadrant la. okay inferring la. inferring you know it's first quadrant mm. so since you know a is first quadrant right <laughs> straight away you you, you write this la. Okay. Then this one you're okay. I won't go on it with you. Okay, I'm just gonna use your triangle here, right? To establish my cosine A and my tangent A in case I need them. Okay, your cosine A is four over five. So this is my A. La. Okay, cosine A is four over five. Tangent A is 3 over 4, right? Mm. Okay, sine, cosine, tangent, I already have them. Huh? Okay, now let's focus on question 2, uh, part 2. Okay, this one you got it right, uh, so I won't go on it. Okay, part 2, right? Okay, part 2 involves some theory. Uh. Anyway, it's one mark, uh, so silly. <laughs> anyway, the question asks you to write down. Uh, I write down, then no need to explain really. If you write down, uh, you just write out like that will do. Why is it like that? Uh, I think you want to know why. You want to know why? Uh? Okay, I explain why. Okay. Okay, if you understand why, uh, no need to explain. Uh. Exam asks you to write down, you write down. Don't, don't, don't write those... Uh, don't no need to write lengthy as a okay. It's only one mark. <laughs> and as you write down the condition, you just write down the condition. No need to explain. Okay, mm -hmm. if the question asks you to explain and write down, uh, you you have to explain already. Uh. And explain and write down usually about three marks uh, or two marks at least. Okay, so your B B is equal to cosine inverse P, right? Okay. So your cosine B is your P. La. Okay, because B is a principal value, right? Correct? They, they say B is the principal value, right? And principal value means it's the answer you get on the calculator, right? Correct? So mm. this will be cosine inverse so B is between 0 to 180. Uh. Correct? Based on the definition of um principal value. 
the reset B is a principal value. So you can establish that your B lies between zero to 180. Yeah. Mm. Okay, B lies on, okay, you see, uh, first you see, uh, A, A already established first quadrant, right? Earlier on. Correct or not? Mm. So based on this definition, right, you know that B are uh, either first or second, right? Yep. Based on the definition, uh, Okay, B is either first or second, and A is first, huh? Then they said different quadrant, right? Since they're going to lie on different quadrant, right? B confirmed in second quadrant, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Cannot be first quadrant, right? <laughs> because A is already at the first quadrant, right? Correct? Mm -hmm. So if B lies on the second quadrant, right? That means your B uh, is no longer starting from zero anymore, starting from 90 to 180. Okay, that's your second quadrant. Mm. So if B starts from 90 to 180, right? Okay, cosine, cosine second quadrant. Uh, cosine second quadrant is negative, right? Probably not. Mm. Negative, negative x, uh, let's say. <laughs> okay. Plus negative, uh. so if cosine b is negative, right? And cosine b is your p, right? So p is your negative x, right? So that means p is a negative value, isn't it? Mm. If p is a negative value, right? Then confirm it is less than zero, uh. Oh, okay. And confirm is more than negative one uh, because <laughs> because for cosine um the lowest you can get is negative one. Uh. Correct. Mm. Based on the waveform. Uh, the cosine waveform. Uh. Zero to one eighty. Okay, understand now? Mm. That that's the reason why it's like that. Oh, okay. This question they never like the the sector is quite kind. Uh. They never ask you to explain. They only ask you to write down. I think a lot of students may not be able to explain. Uh. Yeah. Okay, uh? mm. okay, let's move on to the next question. Okay, this guy. Okay, this guy loves you. Uh? Okay, here there's error. Uh? <laughs> A is not 2. Uh? A is 3. Oh, okay. Oh. Mm. A is not 2, uh, A is 3. Uh. Oh, I think I wrote wrongly. Mm -hmm. Very careless. In exam, your marker will circle and minus 1 or minus 2, minus 1. Okay, you actually know how to do, uh, but you are careless. Uh. Then you mark, you also got to put a tick <laughs> when this is wrong. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> okay, anyway, I'll just do A8 part 1. Uh. Okay, 8 part 1. Okay, so I'm going to use here, okay? So your y, y is equal to, okay, this one I, I'm going to write out, uh, y is equal to ax square plus your bx. Okay, then they plot y over x against x, right? So I'm going to divide this whole equation by x uh, in order to establish my y over x. Mm. Okay, y equal mx plus c. Uh. Okay, this is my b. So the gradient is your a. Uh. 
Okay, greater than is 3i. Did it tell you greater than is 3? So you can just make use of information they gave you. Since gradient is three, right? Therefore, A equal to three. They are still find A and B, right? Huh? Okay, then they pass through this line, right? I mean, pass through this point, right? Two, seven. That means when X, when X is two, Y over X is seven. Mm. So sub in you know, seven equal to a is three, x is two plus b, b equal to one. Okay, three times two, six, seven minus six is one. So b is one. So a is three, b is one. Once you know a is three, b is one, right? A is three, B is one. Okay, you write out this expression here. Lah. This for this. <laughs> because you already know your A and B. Okay. okay, I'm not sure if it's linked or not, but let, let's continue. Huh? Okay, here. Here, like that. Oops, I don't have that. Okay, y equal 3x squared plus x. So they're going to plot y over x squared against 1 over x, right? So I'm going to divide this whole equation by x squared. Okay, divide this whole equation by x squared. So I have y big y equal to m big x plus c. Then they say that they pass through two phi, right? That means your one over x is two. Uh. Mm. Okay, what are you supposed to do? Find the value of y. Okay, you're supposed to find the value of y. So 1 over x is 2, right? Yeah. x is half. Uh. Agree? Mm. x is half. Uh. If 1 over x squared is 5, right? Agree? Mm. So this is 5 over 4. Uh. How do you know can use the value of A and B? It's link 1, ma. <laughs> oh, okay. It's link 1. Even if I don't use, I still use the same thing, ma. I now use a tree, uh. you know this? Mm. It's link 1, the same question, ma. Oh, okay. They cannot tell you um 3x squared plus x more, well, then you already know your a and b already, then you'll be a very silly question. You know it's linked because, because they're still talking about this. They use a and b, ma. if it's different, right, they will use uh, p and q already. Okay. Because the algebra is the same, they still use a and b, that means they're referring to the same line. Because the same question. I understand? Mm. If they are referring to a totally different value, right? They shouldn't put A and B here. They should write PX squared plus QX. Then you will know they are referring to another kind of line. Because they still use back A and B, right? And the A and B is used here. Then they still use A and B here, right? They are referring to the same line. Then that's how you know they are referring to the same line. Mm. 
if it's within the same question. Uh. Of course, if it's question nine like that, then of course the A and B is different from the A and B earlier. But because it's the same question, it's still part question eight. It's just part one, part two. So, so they are still referring to the same value of A and B. Okay. Mm. Okay, uh. okay, let's move on to the next one. Okay, hand soft. Uh. <laughs> I need to look at here uh, because it's link one. <laughs> It's link. Okay, because you managed to solve your four part one, right? I'm just going to write out what you found here la, for, for, for part two. Mm. Okay, you managed to show all that. I won't do out on it already la, since you managed to show all that. That is a factor of this, right? So so basically, um, x cubed minus 4x squared Minus x plus 12. Okay. Equal to 0. Then they say that x minus 3 is a factor, right? So x minus 3 is a factor. Then the other one is x squared minus x minus 4. Equal 0. So eventually you get your x. x is 3. Or x is plus or minus one plus or minus square root seventeen over two. Okay, I can trust your answer here. Huh? Mm. <laughs> okay, so these are the ingredient you need for to do part two lah. Okay, so let's work on part two now. Because hence ah, uh, hence there's only one way to do the question. Unless hands or otherwise. But hands, right, you have to do it this way. You have to use what you found in part one to do part two because of the word hands. Okay, because of the word hands. You must use your answer for part one to do part two. If not, no marks is awarded. Okay, then the question becomes the new question for part two, right? 27 y cubed minus 36 y square minus 3 y plus 12 equals 0. Okay, then after that, you take out your 3. Then become 9y cubed minus 12y squared minus y plus 4 equal 0. You are very tempted to remove a 3, la, but don't do that yet until you're very sure mm. you can remove. <laughs> Okay, this one okay, right? Yeah. Okay, I multiply my tr three inside first, lah. Then you can see some pattern. Okay, this is actually three y square minus three y minus four equal zero. Okay, you compare this expression that I write here with this. Can you see some similarity? Mm. You can see some relationship, right? So you can write here, right, by comparing coefficient. You must write until like that. Huh? Then you can say by comparing coefficient. By comparing coefficient.
by comparing coefficient with with the factor in part one. Okay, with the factors. in part one. Okay, like that is very specific. Really. Okay. We can infer that x equal to 3y. We can infer that x equal to 3y. Correct? You agree, right? Mm. You agree, right? Compare apple to apple. Okay. X is 3y. Uh. So if x is 3y, right? <laughs> x is 3y. Uh. So 3y equal to 3. 3y equal to the answer you have earlier. So you no need to go through the hassle of doing doing um same question again. You can just take the answer from x to put it here. Mm. Because you already explained how come you can do that already. So y equal to 1. y equal to 1 plus or minus square root 17 over 6. Okay? Mm. Divide by 3 la, times 1 third. Divide by 3 times 1 third. So 2 times 3, 6. If the question asks, leave answer is third form like that. You, you can leave in decimal, uh, but I think you leave in third method. Leave in third method. Okay. So am I correct or wrong? This one you didn't do based on the hands part, no? you do as if uh with hands or otherwise. Do you understand? <laughs> they can don't give you marks one. Eh? Uh, oh. Seriously, because you didn't follow the instruction of hand of hands. Unless the question say hands or otherwise, well, then then you have marks. Uh. If they say hands, then no marks. Uh. Mm. Even your answer is correct because you didn't follow the instruction. Uh. They say hands, uh. they didn't say hands or otherwise. Hence, or otherwise means right, the way you do is okay. Uh. Because or otherwise, uh. hence means you have to um, use what you found in part one to do part two. That's why I just I asked you for part one. Uh. If not, I can't do also. Okay? Mm. You know how to make use of this, right? Yeah. This part. I think up to here, no problem. Uh, and getting this one, I think also no problem. Then another thing is, uh, when, we, when you take out your tree, you're very tempted to remove your tree. Uh, then left with 9x cubed minus 12y squared minus y plus 4 equals 0. Don't do that. Eh? <laughs> don't, don't remove the tree. Eh? Mm. Because you divide by 3, this is 0. Uh, then you can't solve the question. Really. You also cannot see 3 y or x. Really. That's why you leave it there. Uh, because <laughs> you need to compare. That's why I leave it there. Okay? Mm. Important, uh, these are important things to take note. Uh. Okay, the next question. Uh, is this the last question? No more idea. Right? Yeah, no more idea. Mm. That's all. Okay? Yeah. So, yeah. Hi guys, thanks for watching my YouTube video and also my Facebook video. And if you like uh, watching my video and you learn something from my video, do like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just click on the link subscribe button right here at the bottom right corner so that you could receive notifications whenever I upload a new video. So I wish students all the very best in their academic endeavors. So I hope to see you in my next video. This teacher David Ng here. So once again, thanks for watching my video. See you next time. Bye-bye.